Hello, disassembly tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Xenonauts X Division mod with me, Blue Ankylo. It's almost midnight! Friday is almost over for Blue. And, uh, you know, last episode or three, we did some missions, and honestly, they went pretty well, other than, like, Blue mistakes, and where I make one mistake, someone dies. But other than that, um, you know, nothing too crazy. We might already be thinking. Some missions might be worth skipping for the future tubers, just just to keep things rolling along. I'm not sure which ones exactly, um, but I'd like to save some time. So we'll we'll think about it as we go on. I'm not I don't, I'm not rushing to cut content, but you know, at this point we're about episode 110, so you know. Oh yeah, we researched that blood pistol. So this is so far the only tech that we know about for blood weapons. Technically, we saw some on that Dr Terror Dreadnought, but this is the first hint at Blood Tech. So what is Blood Tech? It's a chemical weapon result resembling a water gun. High pressure globules of acutely toxic, nicknamed Blood. Sometimes droplet clouds burst larger globules, capable of killing an armored soldier within minutes. Fairly inaccurate. Still more accurate than a human water gun. Um, civilians continue. I understand why only this reptilian civilians wield this weapon. The heat continuously generated by the warmers that keep the blood alive <laughs> cause the degree causes the first degree burns and sore palms after prolonged contact. So basically, this is a civilian-centric weapon. And, uh, they shoot alien red goo all over us. Red ankylos, man. It's full of red ankylos. Our soldiers understandably refuse to come into contact with the weapon, except when absolutely necessary. Blood has an alarming habit of sloshing around within the containment tanks it is stored in, giving the impression that it is actively trying to escape. Ugh. Oh, and all you get is chemical cores. For such a creepy weapon. gonna start this mech. It's actually not gonna take too long, even with the 20. Okay. And time keeps a trucking. So we're gonna have a fair amount of uh, disassembly here. I'll try not to waste too much time. Oh, hey! It's a flying tank! So you remember when I was saying I hate how our tanks get slowed down by grass? And that sucks. Well, this is the solution. The Hyperion. It's a hover tank. It's, uh... I guess it's kind of like the Scimitar. I guess it's a light tank, technically. I guess it doesn't get a cannon. That's too bad. cannon was replaced by a machine gun. So, if you want a flying machine gun tank, maybe rockets. How does it match up the scimitar? Fair bit more armor. Definitely faster, more accurate. The main downside is no cannon, I guess. It's probably another straight upgrade over the Savior. Yeah. So this obsoletes the Savior and any other light tanks. The, um, the Scimitar is still our best tank that can use a cannon. But for non-cannon tanks, this might be the new best one. Pretty expensive. And, I mean, we have a mech. Very spirit wolfy. The lizard things are all women. Uh oh. Future tubers, don't read it. It's too much. Uh. 
I guess I was gonna look at, do we have the resources to build one? Technically, yes. Technically, yes, the best kind of technical. And technically, yes, so we could put a Hyperion in each base. Well, Bradford returns, I need to retire. He's a tier one, he's, he's way out of date. So he's out of here. Uh, the siege tank got retired, the X designation got moved on. So he's retired. We can save that, I guess. And... The drunk mobile, well... You know, he did have a good run. But I think he's decommissioned as well. It's a, it's a tier one tank, you know, they're not very good anymore. But I want to see, <laughs> I want to see if I, if I just skip, the, well, I mean, the Hyperion's got its, it's got a niche. But we're about to get another vehicle that we might want to save a spot for. I guess we could probably build these pistols now. Yeah. Doesn't even take very long. All these engineers really make these work go fast. Hey look! Heavy fusion! So now, the big boom! Even more bigger! So, aircraft, aircraft, ground explosives, vehicle cannons. Mm, oh my. I wonder if I'll get an AP fusion cannon. Boy, that'd be nice. Let's get that fusion torpedo going. Did this... Which which team built their pistols already? Just that one? Alright. C team has their electron pistols. A and B still need to be build them. Spirit Wolf! It's a mech! <laughs> so, you know, mechs are pretty darn anime. Um, it's a mech. Requires weapons for a mech. It costs a lot of fiber. Um, compared to the Hyperion, seeing as they're the two tier 3 vehicles at the moment, it's got a bit better armor. Definitely more chemical and incendiary armor, but uh, similar otherwise. And this is definitely faster, more TUs and accuracy. And the Spirit Wolf is still pretty good TUs, but. The Hyperion will also make it a lot further because it's not slowed down by terrain, whereas the Spirit Wolf has to walk through grass, and grass is a jerk. But we can now research a whole bunch of Timber Wolf and Spirit Wolf weapons. I'm not sure which is the best. I don't really even know what the difference between Timber Wolf and Spirit Wolf is. Like, let me just read this for a second. So this is better than a mag weapon. I think this uses heavy fusion explosives. So I think Timber Wolf is meant to be an upgrade over Spirit Wolf. And then there's like mag tech, Spirit tech, Timber tech. I think but I don't even know. But this does use fusion. These might be built off based on your grenade tech, right? Like fusion tech, plasma tech, something else. No, nope, no plasma. I, I don't even, I don't even know. For now, we'll, we'll just, we'll just, un, we'll just research them. I mean, you know, what, what? Just research them. We'll put uh, around 20 on each of them, I think. Uh, right. Ah! Now I'm just clicking everywhere. What's going on? Okay, we'll get them all. There's not too much more to research with our current branch, so we're going to need to get some uh, some new resources soon. 
Oh yeah, we uh, this was from the civilian mission, our advanced tank wreckage, which is just stronger than other tanks. Doesn't seem to unlock anything. At least not yet. Hopefully we can get these pistols out of the way now. Looks like we've got a decent supply of alloys again. So yeah, I'm glad we did those missions. We've got some more antimatter for our uh, C team. Once we're done disassembling the antimatter weapons, I might build them a, a Mark II cannon if I can afford it. Ah, uh, but the fusion torpedo. So I like to use my bombers, you know. We could upgrade all the plasma torpedoes now to fusion torpedoes. We're going to think about that in just a second. Um, I don't know, I just don't know, I have to make a decision here, and I'm having a hard time making decisions. We've got, uh, one or two more an antimatter cores, then we're gonna build an antimatter weapon. Okay, so now, we don't have any more antimatter cores to get, we did that, uh, terror mission. We don't have enough for a minigun, but we do have enough for a cannon, or, like, a rifle and a pistol. We don't care about the sniper. I think the cannon... I, I've already seen the rifle on two on, on A team and B team. They went for the rifle, which is pretty good. But I want to see the cannon in action. Because uh, I'm still using the Mark I cannon. And it's still pretty good. Alright. Goss Tech... Spirit Wolf. I guess once we've got all the Goss weapons, or all the... Just gonna skip that one. Once we've got all the mech weapons, we can compare which one is better and something. Try to figure out what's what. I just don't think the game has really explained what Timber Wolf, Spirit Wolf means, you know. Fusion cannon, so we could equip this on our scimitar. I assume it just is a bit more damage than the plasma cannon, but not an AP one. Doesn't seem that impressive to me. No AP fusion. So many cores. Alright. So Spirit Wolf Mac? Where did that come from? I don't even remember queuing that up. But I guess that's like the weakest ballistic tech. Oops, research. Or was that... I didn't even research that. They just gave that to me for free because I researched the mech, I guess. So that's just like your intro freebie mech weapon. I, I guess. Oops, dang it. Well, I guess we better look at some some aircraft weapons here pretty quick. Let's finish the timber wolf weapons and then we'll look and the fusion missile and then we'll we'll figure out what we want to build for the aircraft. Or we'll try anyway. I don't want to queue up... How long would this take to do 21... 26 Androns? Not even that long anymore. There was a time when it used to be, uh... 3 hours per one item. Now it's a third of that, basically. Fusion missiles! So that's your light mount, if you want, uh... If you want a missile tech for, for a non-torpedo, non-cannon. I assume it's generally just an upgrade. Like, you know, for the most part, it's going Alenium, or Sidewinder, Alenium, Plasma, Fusion. It should be straight upgrades. Pretty straight, pretty much. This, this song, just not jiving. 
Oh, we did build hyper missiles for our, our Lotus. So this would be an upgrade as well, actually. I wonder if we have enough time to finish all this uh, disassembly before the next wave. We should. Our engineers are like, although we're spending a lot of time talking about things, these are actually triggering pretty darn quick. And also the research is super fast. We're gonna we're gonna rush through most of the phase three technology and then wonder what to do next. Fusion explosive. Hydrogen core. So a better tossing explosive type thing. Like a fusion bomb, is that all? <laughs> You'll have to make a choice, Commander. Their tech or their lives. All right, everything's queued up now. Kind of want to see those finish up. Maybe I should just get all the aircraft weapons and then try to figure out which ones I want to build. Like, I don't know. This is kind of where, for me, the air game gets too complicated around this point where there's all these different options. I'll have a look at them as they complete, or like once they're all complete, because it's it's easier than doing it one at a time and then forgetting what you just were looking at. I might need to pick a. I might need to take some notes. Hunter beam should be just the upgrade to the fighter beams and the advanced fighter beams. I have been preferring Gauss Cannons, but, you know, I didn't build very many of those either. But we should have some resources to build something. Okay, there's our Timberwolf Gauss. See, this is, like, better than Spirit Wolf. Just slightly better than the Spirit Wolf. I think that is the idea. So if we want to build it, we should go... Timberwolf versions, right? Alright, we're almost out of research. VW Timber, that's not even what we've researched. that one. Just save it for last because it takes the longest. This is my favorite part. Everyone gets to watch me uh, disassemble weapons and, and drones one at a time. Low sonic missile. Okay, we'll remember this. We want to check out everything under black titanium. We're going to compare just to see which makes the best. I actually don't want another alien wave now. We're almost done the research, so let's finish the research and then plan out what we want to build with our remaining resources. And then the next alien wave, you know, we'll gather some more resources. So this is a vehicle fusion rocket. It does do more damage than the, uh, the, the fusion cannon. If that's the sort of thing you care about. Better back protecting armor. Well the mech might have good back protecting armor on it. You wanna you wanna be resurrected as a mech? How about that? Okay, there's another cannon style we'll have a look at. I think I missed... Well, we're going to run out of research here, basically, right now, so... 
Conveniently, almost the same time we finished out of we ran out of things to disassemble. Mini mines. We've never seen these before either. We'll have a look at those with everything else. And then all we got left is the generic code, which I'm kind of curious if it leads anywhere. All right, A team is done. Okay, well that's the cue that we should start uh, building something again. Okay, so let's slow it down a little, even slower. Let's look at uh, the cannon weapons first. I'm taking out my notepad now so I can try to figure this out. So, we have for tier three, Gauss cannon, Pulse cannon, Hunter Beam as three standard sort of canny beam weapons. Sonic Thruster is the odd one out that uh, one of the two odd ones out that does a longer range big hit at a slow it has a lock on but a really wide arc and it fires way slower. So this is basically what the landing ship was doing. Hitting us with this long range wide arc hit Ours doesn't seem to be quite as long range. The spear cannon is the needle shooting straight forward for big hits, but only three hits with really slow rate of fire. So, let me do a tiny little bit of math. math. So Gauss Cannon, GC. It's got 15 damage. Uh, it's got a rate of fire of 600. I'm saying that's at a... Uh, that's basically a times two DPS because it fires fast, and so that's you know 30 D 30 DPS is what I'm looking at, and it has 55 ammo. So the total would be around. We could do the math. This is not too hard, or at least close to it. Um, kind of wish I had a calculator on screen for this, but tabbing out is hard. Uh, 550 plus half of that is 275. 550 plus 275 is 825, I think? Around 825, anyway. Okay. So that's... Gauss Cannon... Oh, it's a 15 degree arc. 15 degree just means easier to hit stuff. So I liked it because it wasn't too hard to get your shot, your aiming. And it seems to do good damage. I mean, for tier 3, it does more than the tier 2. We didn't really like the Pulse Cannon, at least I didn't, because although it does 42 damage per hit, it's like a times one DPS. But that gives us, like 42 DPS is actually a nice upgrade. We would kill things quite a bit quicker using this weapon. Um, 30 to 42, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a decent upgrade. But it's difficult to lock on. Like it's really hard. Like, against bigger ships, it probably wouldn't matter, but usually we're, we're trying to shoot down interceptors, and they're so nimble, it's hard... It's hard to get straight behind them. They don't fly in a straight line, so... Really, that 5 degree thing kind of kills it for me. Maybe an awesome... An awesome, like, uh... What I'm trying to say, uh... An awesome air game master would know how to do it, but... I struggled too much. But the total damage is probably a little bit higher. I think I estimated around 900. 42 times 24. So, it's a better weapon except for the firing arc. And the firing arc wrecks it. The final sort of beam would be the hunter beam. These are a little bit more expensive to make, but we haven't looked at them yet because we just built them. Or we just researched them. So it does 20 damage per hit. And it has the times 2 damage multiplier. So this is 40 DPS, which is still a big jump over Gauss. It fires the same rate as Gauss, and it does 5 more damage per hit. So that's that's good. And it has 60 ammo, which is a little bit higher. It actually does a lot more damage in total. That's 1,200 damage total. So this guy is our most effective cannon-style weapon for sure. It has a 12 degree arc, which is a little bit smaller, 
but it might be worth it. The problem is more, it needs an alien heavy weapon system. And we don't have very many of those yet. And we might want to reserve them for building some of our new jets, maybe. Um, if we want to build hunters, we will need one heavy, uh, actually we don't need heavy weapons for these. Drakes, light weapons, heavy engines, okay they don't need those. Fury needs three light and one heavy weapon. And then the Marauder needs one heavy engine, one heavy weapon. Okay. So, if we want to make Marauders or Furies, we do need to save some of these weapons, alien weapons, to make the actual body of the aircraft. But, if we've got spares, this would probably be a better, a better cannon style. If, if we like one of the main three, basically. I would say he gets the star... The only downside is the 12 degree firing arc, which is a little bit harder to manage than the, the 15, but it's pretty close. Then there's these two other weird ones, the Sonic. And I just want to give it a little bit of an idea of what we're kind of damage we're doing here. So 70 damage at much longer range. It's got a huge arc, so you barely have to you barely even have to fly towards the target. So it's a different kind of weapon. But it fires with a three second lock on and it's three shots per second, which is essentially like less than a tenth of our normal DPS. But it does hit for 70. So I'm going to say it's it's actually worse than a 110. If, if 300 is, is, is my baseline, um, this is even, it's like, I don't know, 13th or something. Sorry, singers. But let's just say, I'm going to give it a 0.1 multiplier on DPS. Because, well, this is not a DPS weapon, clearly. The idea is you do your damage from ranged, longer range, slower. But the actual DPS for this is closer to like 7. It's like 6 or 7. Compared to 30 or 40 on the other weapons. And it has a total damage of 700. So it has less total damage, way less DPS, but you might be able to keep your interceptors at range, and then just... But still, the three second lock-on time, it doesn't even just mean you can swing around, look at a, look at an interceptor, like... It might work, but I, I don't know. We still have to use a weapon system for it, so I'm... I don't think it's as, like, okay, I don't know. I haven't really tried it out. It seems less effective, but it has a different strategy than the other ones. It might be really good because you could fight at longer range and maybe, I don't know. I say that's not exciting me too much. And then the last of the new cannon style is the spear cannon. The spear hits for a ton of damage. 240, that's the highest one. By a long shot. It's got good range. It fires even slower. So the, the DPS is, uh... I don't know, it's less than 0.1 of, of normal. This is, uh... Yeah, it's like 0 0.05. Because it's uh, 300 divided by 20. So it's, it's 1 one 20th of the actual DPS if you care about that. And that means its DPS is 20. <laughs> or, uh, 22. No. No, no. 240 divided by 20 is not much. 12? That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the DPS is 12 in terms of, like, actually quickly damaging. Um, which is still a lot less than our, like, primary three. And it gets three shots, which means the total damage is, again, kind of low at 720. And it has a tiny firing arc. So, I don't really know when I would want to use this either, to be totally honest. Because even if I was fighting a larger UFO, 
It's the maximum damage that matters more than one hit for a lot of damage. At least there's no lock-on time, so you don't have to, like, you could just spin, you know, you, you could just, you could be flying and a UFO could be over here. You could probably just, you wouldn't have to even stop to lock on, right? You just have to have it within your sights, within range, and you'd fire immediately, just like the other weapons, like the, the other cannon weapons. And then you could do some barrel rolls, and then, um, you know, a couple seconds later, turn around, try again. Because that's about, uh, something like, uh, well, if 20 RPM is 1 per 3 seconds, it's a little bit more than 3 seconds per shot. So you'd have 3 seconds before you want to turn around and get another shot. I don't know. I, I wish I knew for sure. I, w I wish I had a better, like, understanding of these weapons. Um, and I would like to try them out at some point, but they're kind of low priority for me. I would say... Pulse is out. Sonic and Spear are, like, maybes with testing. And then Goss is, like, the cheap, reliable one that's pretty good. Like, cheap in terms of normal resources. And then the Hunter Beam might edge it out. But it requires special resources. Okay, well I feel like at least I have some idea and hopefully you new tubers have some idea. I, maybe this is a good place for the commenters in the future or anyone sneaking around later on during the live stream if you guys have any suggestions for these. If you are, well, if this is the kind of thing we would need someone like Runes or some of the other more experienced Xenonauts X Divisioners. So if if anyone else gets a good idea, you, you let me know in the future. We'll figure something out. Missile system should be a little bit simpler. There's not going to be as many options. There's only three. So fusion missile should be your basic, you know, bread and butter. I'm just writing a couple things down so I can refer to it in the future. 375 damage is good. 2.2 kilometers is normal. Lock on time one second. That's normal. Uh, six ammo. Uh, pretty normal. <laughs> and uh, a total debt. We could do some math there. I think the rate of fire for missiles doesn't change much, unless I'm mistaken. Oh, it actually it actually shoots faster than the last one. But it's not an equal comparison. Like, these weapons are going to work differently. And missiles and torpedoes have always been a fairly slow... Like, it takes a second to lock on, and it takes so long to fire every missile. That's just the way it is. Um... And what matters more is the total damage, which is math. Uh, so you go 2400 minus 150, so 2250, I think. So that's... I just want to have this number available. The fusion missile does a maximum of 2250 with the standard kind of missile range, rate of fire, and lock-on capacities. That seems like a lot of damage. It has six ammo, I wrote that down, yeah, okay. That's fine. Low sonic missile. Now, I did, if this is the upgrade to the hyper missile, I did like the hyper missile in tier two. So let's see if this is uh, maybe worth giving a shot. It has... Only 45 damage per projectile. That sounds lower than the last one. No, no, it's like twice as much. Never mind. So 45 damage. It also has a huge... Wait, is this the same even weapon? It. Oh, this is more like the piranhas, not the hypers. It's a, it's a competition. I never even built a piranha. Okay, well, we'll figure this out. It's got a huge range, though. Well, let's just let's just learn how the the, the rates of fire work. So, what did I say? Forty-five damage per hit. Nine K range is great. That's a huge range. Zero lock time. That's also great. What is, what's the bet? What's the downside? Forty ammo. Uh, that gives us... It also fires at... It's super fast firing. It's got a... A times one DPS mod. 
compared to like a times 0.1 mod. What's the downside to this? The projectiles are slower? Oh, small firing arc. A 15 degree arc. 15 degrees. What was the missile? I didn't even write down the missiles because I never even think about it. 45, uh, 40 degree arc. If I was using a plasma, what is it? So we're getting a smaller arc in the fusion anyway. And then the sonic missile is like... Gauss cannon arc. Thanks, Thornum. So it's a bit less total damage. That's a bit of a downside. But it's a super long range, and that's really, like, tempting. So I would say... 450 less damage. Super long range. Pretty quick projectiles. You have to be... So this probably wouldn't... Remember how we fought with the, um... The Terror Dreadnought? This probably wouldn't work on the Terror Dreadnought, because you have to fly directly towards it, basically. Whereas with the more wider shooting type weapons, you can fly at it, f like, perpendicular, so you avoid the, uh, the, the damage. So Low Sonic might not be ideal for those. There must be an upgrade to Hyper Missiles somewhere, we just haven't found it yet. This is the other type of fast fire rather than rather than piranha which was a different kind I, unless it's unless there is no upgrade to hyper um but yeah that might be an option i mean i could compare it to hyper how much damage was this uh 1100 so assuming we could make it work we could use the sonic missile to upgrade our previous people with hyper because it does more damage anyway um 600. Doesn't fire quite as quickly, but I think it's still fast enough to overwhelm, by far overwhelm any point defense system. It's still, that high rate of fire is really good for overwhelming point defense. So this is still good against point defense. And then mini mines, I mean, do I even care? It's super slow, like the, the projectiles move slowly. Perfect homing, basically, once they're out there. The mini mines will not catch anything. Well, I mean, the AI isn't very smart, so you could probably get them to fly through it. But also, the large UFOs don't move very far, so it would take forever. Because it's not like our interceptor's buzzing around. The, the, the big UFOs barely move. Well, I just want to give a, an idea of the damage, at least. Mines do 135 per hit. 10k range is huge. Lock on is one sec. They've got 20 ammo. That's uh, that's gonna be the highest damage I think. 2700. If I mean that's gonna take a lot longer though. 2700 damage and slow rate of fire. One per second. Or not really, is it? No. Yeah, 60 per minute is one per second. Of course it is. Come on, Blue. Get your act together. And it's 180 arc, so anything in front of the UF... So that's that's an interesting one. I, I this, is where I get, this is where I get confused. I'm like, I don't know. Do we want to build jets with that? It's only three alloys. This is three alloys. This is three. They're all three alloys. The mini mines technically do the most damage, but I assume it takes longer. The missiles kind of do their damage up front. The sonic missiles are a little bit faster firing in bulk at long range with a small arc. Hmm. I don't know which one to build, but that's my analysis phase. <laughs> Easy, right? Easy analysis. And then the last phase is torpedoes, and there's only going to be two, so that's going to be a bit faster. So fusion torp. Uh, 862 damage, that's pretty huge. 
It's got a 7.5k range, which is not as big as the uh, Sonic ones, interestingly. I'm trying to think of something that would combo well on my, um, on my Lotus, because my Lotus can have a torpedo and a missile. The uh, Plasma Torps were 7.4, so this is, it's the same range as a Plasma Torp, but more damage. It's got a, a 3 second lock time. I think that's the same. It only has 4 ammo, which I think is the same. And 20 RPM. Forty degree. I just want to see, just to compare to what we're replacing here. Because if we replace the plasma, am I missing anything? Slightly smaller firing arc, same rate of fire. It's it's got to be just a straight upgrade. There's if I want to go plasma torp to fusion torp, all we're getting is basically two hundred damage extra per hit, and four torpedoes. That's an extra eight hundred damage. So that's, I think, a clean upgrade for any torpedo bomber. But we want to check the other option before we commit. Uh, so that total damage, approximately uh, 3,200 plus 2,400, 34, 48, maybe. Someone can check my math if you care. I think 34, 48. Future, future tubers will get a 20 minute aircraft uh, weapon analysis phase. Math with me, Blue Anculo. The last one though is the Neutrino Torp. We're also missing, I think, one cannon weapon, the focus lens from from the shuttles. But we don't even have it. We don't have to worry about it yet. So this is our other heavy mount. 180 damage per hit. So smaller per torpedo by a fair margin. 10k range is longer. Uh, lock time is much shorter. One second. We've got 25 ammo. We've got... A 75 RPM, which is almost four times faster. And a smaller arc significantly, 15 degrees. Alright, so longer range, faster firing, faster lock. Interesting. If it did, it's, uh, it's almost four times faster, 20 RPM to 75 RPM. So if it was 4 times faster, it'd be 180 times 4, 367, 20. So the DPS is actually pretty similar, but the projectiles travel a lot slower. So you have to wait till they hit to get the kill. And maybe some craft can run away from them, I don't know. Anyway, the total damage here, 180 times 25, shouldn't be that bad. Uh, shouldn't be that hard. That's going to be more than the Fusion Torp, I think. 1,800, 3,600, 4,500? That's a lot of total damage, if you can get them to all fire. So the DPS is similar. It will take... How quick are we firing them? Assuming we can keep our lock on... Which is a little bit harder, you know, the arc is not as big. We're firing more than one per second, so it takes less than 25 seconds to fire them all. How long did it take to fire all the fusion torpedoes? I guess, like, the thing with the fusion torpedoes is you can get a lock on, fire, and then get the heck away from it. The neutrino torpedo, you have to keep it in your sights again. It's, it's the difference between a flyby bombing and a lock on keeping target keeping your target set and I was just saying how with the cannons I did prefer the more wider kind of side shots even at 15 degrees compared to the the needle forward ones and for bombers I think the same rule would apply I think the boring way is to just stick to the basic like fusion tech like the torpedo tech fusion torpedoes it might be interesting to try the neutrino torpedoes they do have a higher damage output but if I'm trying to take down like what when when does this this when does this level of analysis matter? Well, the hardest UFOs are the ones where this makes any difference. If we're just shooting down cruisers and corvettes, it doesn't matter. We we we're fine with a plasma torpedo. So we could just upgrade to a fusion torpedo and that's fine. Um 
if we're fighting the really hard ones, which are the Terror Dreadnoughts right now, I don't actually think a Neutrino Torpedo would be better because of specifically how we fight it. So when would the Neutrino Torpedo be su su superior? I don't know. It might kill a bomber from further back. A bomber carrier. But my Lotuses don't care because they've got their anti-missile system. But if you were flying on a, a, a non and countermeasure you uh, jet maybe your your neutrinos could outrange their missiles that's probably the kind of thing this would be good for so if you're flying with um say like this might actually be a really good idea if we build furies which are no countermeasure double heavies we could put two neutrino torpedoes on them and just stay at max range 10 10 kilometers firing well, 50 Neutrino Torpedoes, and then just leaving. And that would do a tremendous amount of damage, theoretically out of range of most of the alien craft. Like, I don't know the aliens... Um, I don't know what kind of range they've got on their their big ships. Like, uh, what are we looking at? Terra Battleship. They're not even all here. <laughs> There's too many. But you know what I mean, like, if we're talking about carriers and stuff, we know they've got some different weapons and long-range missiles, but 10 kilometers is really long. So I think I'm going to say standard torpedo for Lotuses, neutrinos for Furies once we get them, and if we have a Drake, if we go Drake, we're probably going at countermeasure. So they would be geared the same as a as a Lotus. It would have a, a fusion torpedo and a countermeasure, but the Lotuses are better because they can have a fusion torpedo, a countermeasure, and something that bypasses point defense, which is also really helpful. So if you want to bypass point defense, we either stick with the hyper missile, we don't go fusion missile, we either go mini mines, which I'm not sure if that would bypass because the rate of fire is too slow. So we go low sonic for Lotus. And that means we're not really building any mines or fusions right now, fusion missiles right now. Because I'm not sure when you would want to equip these. I guess on the Lotus, something that doesn't have countermeasures, this does a little bit more damage than the sonic missiles. But if there, if there is countermeasures, you want to get around those. And that's kind of... The torpedoes still hit way harder. Okay. Fine. And then I've already talked about cannons. For now, we're going Goss or Beam. And maybe I'll build a couple Sonics at some point to test it out. Well, thanks for hanging in, everybody. I'm sorry that took forever. I just... I felt like I don't have a good handle on it right now. So I wasn't sure... I, I mean, I can't choose which one to build. I don't know I don't know what would the right choice would be. But for now, we'll upgrade our torpedoes. We just got the fusion torpedoes anyway, and we'll upgrade the hyper missiles to sonic missiles, which I think is an upgrade technically, although it's not a direct I mean, I didn't even compare them that closely, right? But <laughs> I'm glad you guys don't mind. I'm just you know, it's one of those weird this is where things get really complicated kind of steps. 22, this was 11, yeah, I think I said the Sonic Missiles did more damage. A little bit slower rate of fire, but way longer range, which is pretty nice. Projectile speed is similar, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's a simple upgrade then, no problem there. Okay, so, we'll upgrade our Lotuses. I think, assuming we have the resources. So, two torpedoes to start, and then two Sonic Missiles to follow. We'll do that everywhere. And then we'll upgrade other Lotuses, and then we'll start upgrading the Foxtrots and Lancers to Fusion Torpedoes after that. It is, like, again, part of the thing for those of you watching along in the future, maybe long, long from now, we are playing on a relatively easy difficulty for air game, so I might not need to do this much analysis, but... If you're playing it with no easy air game or on a higher difficulty, or if you want to, then you really do need to understand the ins and outs of these weapons. And if I feel like doing that in the future, hopefully this gets me close enough now that I have an idea what to research. Like, is it worth rushing to these? Well, 
it kind of depends on how hard it is to shoot down your UFOs more than anything. Um, at least I know these are upgrades <laughs> and not just side grades. So we'll see how that goes. It won't even take too long to build them, which is nice. I think in the grand scheme of things, it's still better to focus on your ground forces first in this mod. Because generally the air game, well, on easy air game, again, I don't know for sure. But it feels like you need to get your resources from the ground. And if you can't win those ground missions, you're just doomed. So you don't want to spend your alloys on these until you've got, you know, your armor build, I kind of think. I would definitely beeline for the armor faster than these, uh, these air upgrades. But again, I'm playing on pretty easy, so... Alright, so our first two bird upgrades... Fusion Torps and Sonic Missiles. Tier 3. Alright, and then... So each of the main bases upgrades their own Lotuses. We have two more bases that have Lotuses, so we gotta get those upgraded as well. Australia and uh, Europe. And then after that we'll just probably upgrade these to something. We'll have to pick one, but... Which it means I have to queue them up, of course. But hopefully these will be built and equipped before the next UFO wave and we'll be able to test them out. We spent all this time planning, you know, and let's see if it actually works. You know what I, need. I need to skip this song. Thank you. Okay, so we'll upgrade like Europe and you will upgrade Australia. Okay, and then B-Team, we'll catch up in a second. All these engineers, so nice. I really like how quickly things are being built, honestly. I'm glad we got the base upgrade fairly quick. I think the first time I played it, I didn't realize I had to let the bases grow. So I wasn't getting medium bases for a long, long time. All right, so you've got, oops, wrong button. You've got your Lotus upgrades. Y B team, that is to say. Sonic, Fusion, Fusion, Sonic. And then, now we can start building torpedoes for other bases. Assuming I wanna waste, well, waste. Okay, I know I just talked about it. Is there any reason we need a spring cleaning. Yeah, there's some songs that definitely need to be removed. I try to blacklist them, but it doesn't even delete them from the queue for some reason. Um, is there any reason... Like, if we're looking at... Because the next type of jets we're upgrading are the Lancers. Lotuses seemed fairly obvious what to upgrade. Lancers will probably be upgraded to Furies. And I was thinking... The Neutrino Torpedoes. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build three and I'm going to put them on the Australia group because the Australia group has the Lotus anyway. So if these fail us, I will know. And I'm, I just need to test it out to know for sure. But we are going to build three neutrinos to just, for, just for science. They seem like they should work, but like I said, I don't, I don't even know. I've, I've never really tried. And it's kind of like get it wrong and you lose sort of thing for the air game <laughs> at least your your aircraft aren't lost permanently or anything all right so we're gonna send upgraded air weapons to Australia if I can find them anyway so it'll be X air three fusion uh, not plasma, sorry. And low sonic. So we're going to want to sell some of our old stuff to make space and to keep things organized. This base is going to send their extras to Europe. So all of our lotuses will be upgraded now. Fusion Torp. 
This should make us better able to shoot down some of the more difficult jet uh, UFOs. Okay, let's get those equipped. I mean, optimally, you would just have a ton of lotuses, but uh, 10 is still lots, I think. We wouldn't even need to worry about the Lancers if I had more of these. Maybe I'll send the Neutrinos to Europe as well, seeing as they've got kind of the backup options. They've got both types of bombers right now. Make some Neutrinos. And I forgot to queue up A-Team. I think without going crazy, I'm just gonna upgrade some of the the Lancers. Like we're gonna we're upgrading the Lancers in Australia and Europe to Neutrino to test. I'm gonna upgrade the others to Fusion because I know it'll be the same as Plasma. Like it won't change anything. Alien genetic code. Well, this is like a big research, I'm sure. Um, unfortunately, I don't think this will lead anywhere yet because. I believe we need blood technology for this. This will be like the next tier of chemical grenades, I think. But, you know, some science about alien genetics. Nothing yet, and that is the end of our research for the moment. Alright, so you've got your three neutrino. It's actually going to take no time at all to build all these, uh, all these torpedo techs. So we're building, what, six here? Let's do three here, honestly. We're only going to need... No, we're going to need 12 total. Sorry. Base management. This is why I've been putting it off for so long. Uh, so we're, we're sending the neutrinos to Europe and Australia. Uh, X, going to give it to you. Please give it to you. X, aircraft, neutrinos. Okay, and then build some fusions. Okay, Europe's already got their upgraded lotuses. I mean, uh, Europe. I mean, uh, Europe. Now we upgrade to our first round of neutrinos. I hope these work out. They seem neat. I kind of like the idea of using some of the alternate tech. Like, the vanilla game only had, like, plasma fusion type torpedoes. We didn't have a lot of options. We just had fusion missiles, plasma missiles, and there's like one or two tiers of cannons. You didn't have to do all this math to figure stuff out. So I like the idea that there's all these other options, but it does make things more difficult. All right, engineers are doing their thing. Neutrinos done. Send them to Australia. Ooh, nice roll, Thorna. Alright, neutrinos. And... Basically, everyone had to make three fusion torpedoes to finish the, uh, the torpedo upgrade. And that'll be enough. Well, A-Team is doing six, everyone else is doing three. And then we'll have every bomber with uh, upgraded uh, torpedoes. So transfer to North America, which is North North America. Give them some torpedoes. And at this point, that's like the last of our torpedoes we'll need to build. Now we can build maybe some extra Gauss cannons. We've got the resources for now. I'll build a pack of six for some, a Corsair, one of the Corsair families. It does look like we're going to get this all equipped before the next wave. So hopefully we'll be able to test these out with uh, relative safety. I am definitely interested in how this works. North America. 
is getting just straight up fusion upgrades. And then we just need to upgrade the torpedoes in Soviet, South America, and South Africa, and then as many cannons as we feel like building. That was A team. Oh, I think I forgot. No, no, I didn't forget. I think we'll just do a pack of six for each base. I don't want to spend like everything here, and this is already. Six times nine. We don't even have that much, do we? Hold on. Did I overestimate even here? I forget. Like, these are way more expensive than I was thinking. We're not, we're not even, we're not going to have anywhere near enough. All right. Stop at three. This was maybe a mistake, but. Hey there, runes. You just missed like a half an hour of aircraft tier 3 weapon analysis where I tried to figure out what weapon works for what system. <laughs> Maybe when I finish this episode in a second for the future tubers we can we can uh, get your opinion on it. Because <laughs> I'm assuming you have a better idea of tier 3 weapons than I do. Uh, what was I doing here? Yeah, Gauss Cannon, we have enough to make 3 at least. So that'll be... That'll be enough for one set of Corsairs, and that might be just all we can afford right now, because they're too expensive. Oh, I forgot to send... Okay, I also need to remember to send the ones we just built. Alright, Soviets get three. Three torpedoes. And then from the A-team, we got two more bases with upgrades. South America. And... One, two, three. And the last base of torpedoes. Goes to South Africa. Okay. Good. Now our engineers. Well, get that out of the way, I guess. Soviet, South America, South Africa. So if I did this right... In theory, even our lowly Foxtrots have bigger explosions, bigger bangs. And I will try to upgrade these, you know, when we can afford to. For now, this is cheaper to upgrade your torpedoes than to give you anything else. Uh, we have not upgraded all the mag storms yet. That's still a ways off. But we've got a pretty good air coverage of the world, and at least we have the explosive tech. Um, we got neutrinos to test out. We've got the sonic torp fusion combo, lots of fusion torps in general, the neutrino test, same lotus guys, lotuses are all the same, and the main three bases have Corsair, have the Gauss. I think the next base we upgrade will be Australia, give their Corsairs Gauss, and then after that probably Europe base, because we're kind of getting, Australia and, U and Europe are kind of my secondary like, they're my big aircraft bases. Okay. Speaking of which... So I think I've spent enough alloys now. I've, I've basically spent all of our alloys on aircraft weapons. That'll be enough until the next round when I feel like building more. Or the next wave of UFOs when we get some more resources, basically. Uh, but we do need to transport these to, I guess, Europe first, because it's, I think, next on the list. Or Australia, whatever. We'll start at the top, work down. Three Gauss cannons, please. I think C-Team is basically out. Uh, there's probably not more I want them to do until, unless I really dig deep. Uh... Maybe we just don't have the alloys for these. I'd like to make I'd like to start getting some better grenades, but it's just not Yeah, we don't really have the alloys for stuff like that. And I don't have any way of getting more alloys right now. Got to do more missions, man. Got to do more missions. 
Let's just wait for those to finish and get to Australia. And then we'll do Australia all together. I don't like having mixed mis mix mismatched guns on my on my interceptors. It confuses me more than I like. Even if it's technically an upgrade, I'd rather have the full set at the same time. A little bit of baby OCD. Alright. The Gauss Cannons are pretty expensive. Maybe we should have been considering more... Should we just go to Hunter Beams? Like, we've got... I don't want to spend all of them. Or do I? Do I care? How many could we build? That I didn't really take into consideration how expensive... We save the Furies and stuff for later, we just get the better beams right now. That would get us a lot better tier 3 guns real quick. Because we've got enough right now for... Alright, I convinced myself. It's putting off building certain aircraft for a little bit longer, but... I think this is worth it, because these will be even stronger than Gauss Cannons. And it's not using any alloys. But we do need to do a lot of, uh... We, we definitely need to do a lot of, um... UFO missions to make up for all the weapons and stuff. Alright, goodbye Magstorms. You've got... You've been upgraded. This is at least a simple upgrade. It's just that they're expensive in alloys, and I don't have a lot of alloys, so maybe I shouldn't have built those Gauss Cannons anyway. Well, here goes. So for the future tubers, we're going to end the episode here because it's been an hour of uh, base management. But clearly, we have some aircraft battles to do. Another terror battleship, not a terror dreadnought. Well... That's probably all we've got. We'll look forward to that in the next wave. I don't see anything I'm terribly scared of. I'm scared of doing these missions, but I think we, we should be okay now. So we're going to end the episode here. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed. Have a great day.